Today I'm building a team of transfers only and then trying to win a championship with them, but there's a twist. I have to start off with a blank roster and I can only add 12 players to each side of the ball while behind them are all 40 overalls. So we can't afford to have any injuries the entire year. And I need to make this team as good as possible because if I'm unable to win a championship with them, I have to give away a jersey to a random commenter. To start it out, we need to find our cornerback one. And obviously we have to go with the top ranked guy that transferred this year, Travis Hunter, who went from playing for Jackson State to playing for Colorado. And what's great about him is he can play on both sides of the ball. So that's extremely helpful since we don't get that many players. And I've also decided that I'm going to put these guys on BYU. So I'll need to win the new Big 12 while also winning a natty to be successful. As for our cornerback two and three, there's multiple guys I could go with, but LSU's Denver Harris is only an 85 overall. So I was very fortunate that I found Fentral Cypress the second. This guy went from playing for Vanderbilt to playing for the Seminoles and he's a 92 overall. So our defense is looking incredible so far. And to play in the slot, I had to choose between between Kyrie Jackson and Christian Roland Wallace. And it might surprise you I'm taking somebody on USC's defense, but this is the right move. The 87 overall was a monster at Arizona before he came over to the Trojans, but none of these three can get hurt because all that's behind them is 40 overalls. And let's move over to the offensive side of the ball where the first thing I want to fill is our tight end. It looks like the top two guys are Jaheim Bell and Eric All Jr., but I can't take somebody on Iowa's offense, especially since he has 63 speed. That means we're snatching another guy from Florida State, and this feels like a solid start to our hopefully high-power powered offense. But what's interesting is Jaheim Bell transferred from South Carolina to Florida State, and the guy that replaced him on the Gamecocks is Trey Knox, who I'm also going to make a part of this team. But the only reason I can do that is because we need a fullback and that drops his overall to 81. But I still think it'll be nice to have some extra talent on the field. And before I forget about them, I'm going to get the kicker and punter out of the way. For our kicker, the guy that I'm choosing isn't even near the top of the rankings. But if you scroll down to number 14, you'll see 5'9 Charles Campbell. And this dude has a heck of a leg with 95 kick power. So that's going to be huge as he should be able to hit from 60. And I might as well also snag the punter that's ranked number one in the portal. So I got Ryan Sanborn who went from Stanford to Texas. And I'm happy with how our special teams unit is looking so far. But I really want to continue to build our offense up. And I have to add the tackle that somehow has an NIL value of $718,000. He's only an 82 overall and I don't know why he's worth that much. Especially since he transferred from Rhode Island to go to Oregon. But he's the lowest overall that I'm going to add to this offensive line. And I might as well snag the number one interior lineman who went from Alabama to Miami. Javon Cohen is an 89 overall, which is much needed because remember right behind him is the worst player of all time. And even though he's an offensive lineman, you might recognize his name because he was one of the players that responded to me when I DM'd 100 college football players. Next up, 247 had this guy all the way down at number eight, but Drake Nugent is a 93 overall center that went from playing for Stanford to playing for Michigan. He's lucky that he got out of Stanford with the dumpster fire it's become. And I don't know what that means for Colorado considering they just lost to them. For our left tackle position, I look through all of these players overalls, but I wasn't expecting for it to take all the way down to number 19 to find an 85 plus. Tennessee's John Campbell Jr. came from Miami, and with the addition of him to our team, there's one spot left on our offensive line, and that's going to have to go to Jarrett Kingston, who wasn't highly touted, but in NCAA football, this kid's an 89 overall, and I'll gladly let the guy that went from Washington State to USC finish off this offense. Now, since I've disregarded it for a bit, we do need to add to our defense, and I could have gone with someone like Shiloh Sanders that's worth a lot of money, but I went off a of skill instead. Texas strong safety Jalen Catalan is a 90 overall, and before he joined the Longhorns, he played for the Razorbacks, and I'm super pumped to have somebody of his caliber on our defense, and I also have to mention the reason I'm not taking Shiloh is because he's an 84, which is alright, but I'd much rather have somebody like Evan Williams, since the Oregon safety who came from Fresno State is an 88 overall, and when I move him to free safety, he becomes an 89. Our defensive backs are insane, but none of them can afford to get injured, and now let's fill out the defensive line. I'm skipping over Justin Rogers because I'm still salty he left Kentucky for Auburn, but right below him was Anthony Lucas, and when I move him to defensive tackle, he is a 90 overall. I'm guessing he's one of the former five stars that left Texas A&M and he ended up at USC, but all that matters now is he is a part of an actual defense. And right beside him, I'm getting the number one guy that went from South Carolina to Oregon. Jordan Birch is an 88 overall left end, and I'm confident in this guy to generate a ton of pressure, but if he can't get it done, I'm bringing in another player from this list, Josiah Stewart, and he went from playing in the Sun Belt at Coastal Carolina to playing for the Wolverines. On NCAA football, he starts out as a right outside linebacker, but I've decided he's going to play right end for us instead, and that's going to make him a 90 overall. If our backups weren't so bad, this defense might not ever give up a point, but before we finish it off, I have to at least get us our halfback, and since you all know I'm a Kentucky fan, I think you know where I'm going with this one. If you look at 247's transfer rankings, you're not going to see him in the top six, but all the way down at number 11, you'll see Ray Davis's beautiful face, and I honestly feel bad that we're wasting all of his talent at Kentucky this year. If he could just avoid ever getting hurt, we're going to run the ball extremely well, and I could go ahead and choose our quarterback now, 
but I'm having a hard time choosing between these three players, so I'm going to take more time thinking about it while we complete our defense. When I looked at this list, I saw that Desan McCall was listed as a linebacker, but he transferred from Indiana to Oklahoma, and I didn't see him on their roster, but after digging a bit deeper, I found him listed as a strong safety, and he's only an 85, but when we move him to left outside linebacker, he becomes an 88, so I think I've found the player that I want to use her with, and of these six players, I'm choosing three more of them to play linebacker for us, but I can't believe I'm picking up another player from USC's defense. If only it could perform as well as it looks on paper in NCAA football, and that's also true for Colorado's as I'm adding Des Moines Kennedy. I know he's only an 83, but he's one of the fastest transfers I could find, and if any of our 11 starters go down, he could be a clutch backup that can fill in many roles. As for the last spot on this defense, I had a hard time deciding between Mason Cobb and Nick Jackson, but since I'm never going to use somebody from their offense, I might as well get someone from their defense, so we're taking the 86 overall linebacker from Iowa, and if players can stay healthy, this defense should go crazy this year. As for the offense though, we still have four different spots to fill, and there's so many good names to choose from which makes this super hard, but there's no question I have to put Keon Coleman on this team because he's been going off, and he made a great decision going from Michigan State to Florida State. I can't wait to throw up a ton of 50-50 balls to him, and for wide receiver two, I'm going to do something the NCAA couldn't. Tez Walker is going to be eligible to play in the first game of his season because I'm choosing him, and he is finally eligible now, but I can't believe it took this long, so I felt like I had to get the Kent State transfer on this team, and for the last spot, I'm taking the guy that went from Georgia State to Louisville. This was a hard decision to make because I'm missing out on a lot of great talent, but A.D. Mitchell only comes in at an 86 overall, and Jamari Thrash was so much fun to use in a previous video, so we're going to see if he can help us get a championship, but who's going to be throwing the ball for us? I can admit Devin Leary hasn't been great, so it won't be him, and Shadur Sanders is an 85, but we already have Travis Hunter, and I felt like we could do better anyway, so I kept looking around, but again, DJ Ugalele is also only an 85, so when I noticed Sam Hartman was an 89, the decision was instant. We're going to have a grown man starting at quarterback who transferred from Wake Forest to Notre Dame, and that concludes our offense that'll hopefully put up a ton of points, but I'm not great at using slow quarterbacks, and Sam Hartman has 57 speed, so our defense is also going to need to rise to the occasion, and if you care about special teams, I'm going to start Jamari Thrash at kick returner. It took me a minute, but now I have every single player on this team, and I'm just hoping that we rarely see Joe Randoms on the field. Anytime somebody gets injured, this is what's going out there, and I'm not excited to see that Texas is on the schedule, because they're tough to take down when you play on Heisman, and even with this team, because we have no depth, we're projected to be the 58th best one. It is time to shake things up in this new Big 12, and our starters make us a 97 overall team, and even though there's so many sick jersey combos for us to go through, I'm sure that we're going to lose players throughout the year due to injury, so it's a good thing our first matchup is against the worst team in college football, and I thought that meant we dominate, but we're about to go down 14 to 0. If we can't even take down Nevada, it's going to be a long season, and on this third and goal, I'm using Travis Hunter. They're going with the halfback screen. We are going to lock up as long as we make a tackle, and it's time to figure it out offensively. You can see me on the sidelines trying to get the team fired up, and I have to get used to using a pocket passing quarterback in Sam Hartman, where he is going to throw another interception. Yes, I have already thrown two within the first quarter of this game. We're going down 17, and how am I supposed to win a championship with this team? On third and two, I'm just going to feed it to Ray Davis, who gets blown up, and we have no choice but to go for it on this fourth down, because if we don't pick this up, it's going to get ugly, and that's fumbled. I have given all of these transfers quite the challenge, even if it's only against Nevada, and I'm noticing that everybody is already gassed. I need to pick up this fourth and six, and it's dropped, so Tez Walker has been extremely disappointing this far, and there's no way that we're down 24 to zero right now. This is ridiculous. We have to score, and I'm going to try to let Ray Davis just finish it off, but we already have to chase points, and on this two-point conversion, we're going to get it. That was actually our cornerback, too, that held onto the football, and now he's out there on a third and seven where we're hopefully going to get a stop. I sent in a blitz, and that was almost picked. I understand that it's Nevada, but Travis Hunter played the best defense I've seen in a while here, and then after we scored another touchdown on the two-pointer, he makes the grab. Honestly, we just had a really slow start, but Keon Coleman's been amazing, and with two minutes left in the third quarter, I'm going to check our kicker's range, but he can drill that. That's exactly why I picked him, and on this third and seven, I sent in a blitz, but we missed the sack, so it's a good thing Nevada's quarterback can't hit a target, and I'm not sure why they came out playing so well, but is that our middle linebacker at halfback? Apparently, Ray Davis is already out for two quarters, so middle linebacker Des Moines Kennedy is going to be taking over at the running back starting role, and look at him go with his 84 speed to about the 35. In this type of situation, we clearly need to be passing the ball, and I'm going straight back to Keon Coleman, but Sam Hartman might have been the wrong choice at quarterback as he has not hit a target until Tez Walker just got underthrown. It is a shame that you all have had to witness such a terrible performance from us. We need to get the third down stop though, and now we have the ball back with about four minutes remaining and a chance to go down the field and score the game-winning field goal or touchdown. I would take just a field goal, but Bell is going to break free, and this is Jaheim Bell 
the guy that transferred from South Carolina to Florida State. So what a luxury it is to have him on our team and also to finally have a lead in this matchup. If our defense can't clutch up one final time though, we're gonna lose. And that should have been it right there, but we just couldn't hold on to the football. So now it's a third and seven where it's a screen pass. I almost got over to it, but at least they were only able to get a few yards. And on fourth and 11, I'm running around with Stewart. They take the flat. We just need a big hit, please. And thank goodness it is all over. It's unbelievable we only won by five points, but we've gotten very lucky with our next matchup. Arkansas quarterback KJ Jefferson's out with a broken wrist. So this is our opportunity to go out and win by a lot more. On the first drive, I'm gonna go with a Madden classic play and look at Jaheim Bell getting open. But what's been really fun is playing against Jacoby Criswell and I'm sending heat his way all day. Ray Davis is also back and healthy. So if he had enough stamina here, I think he'd take it to the crib, but he's already a bit tired. So we're just gonna have to get into the end zone on another play where I'm gonna roll out and find Travis Hunter, but it's intercepted and said Walcott somehow got out to it. That's unfortunate. By the end of the first half, it is seven to seven and I am gonna be aggressive and go for it here on the goal line and I'm gonna throw it to Ray Davis who drops it. You can't make this stuff up, man. All I wanna do is get an easy win and I see Keon Coleman streaking open, but it's overthrown. So now we have to pick up this fourth down and what a catch from Tez Walker. If only everybody on this team could be this consistent and down on the goal line, I'm expecting Ray Davis to punch it in. Compared to last week, we're playing a lot better, but we still need to pick up a stop on third down and I feel like we can hang on to a four point lead with a quarter left. What I plan on doing is just running down as much of the clock as I can with Ray Davis. And since we have a good offensive line, this hasn't been too difficult, but Arkansas did just force us to a fourth and two and we could end the game with the first down. So that's what I'm going for. Jaheim Bell holds onto the ball and dives down. That's what Dan Lanning thought would happen when he went for it on fourth down against Washington. And I'm biting my tongue on a Miami roast here. We definitely did much better in this game than the one against Nevada. So we should have no issues versus FCS school Montana. And with about two minutes left in the second quarter, we are about to go up 28 to zero. Big 12 conference play starts after this. So life is about to get tough, but I'm enjoying it while it lasts. And Sam Hartman is finally having his first good game, but with 57 speed, he's not much of a scrambler. So we're going to dump it off to Ray Davis. What's funny about the end of the game is because we don't have any backups. Our punter is out there at quarterback, but there is somebody on the injury report. And it's just one of the Joe randoms. We need Sam Hartman to carry this performance in the next week though, because we're about to go on the road at number nine TCU. They took down LSU, so I'm a bit worried. And if we want a shot at the 14 playoff, I don't think we can lose. Early on, I can sense that they're about to send a blitz our way. So I'm going to throw it up to Jamari Thrash. And that is the reason that I wanted him on this team. His speed is amazing. But what would be even more amazing is if we could get a stop on third down here. And that should have been intercepted. We had so many different guys in the area, but they just need to get their awareness up. And on third and seven, of course, Bailey catches it, but we just railed him. And I've never seen somebody get hit this hard before. They don't trust their kicker. So they went for it on fourth and two. And Mason Cobb is playing like he wants to end somebody's life. If he can continue to hit like this, he might be my favorite defensive player I've ever used. And because of how well our defense has done, including a pick six, with a minute remaining in the third quarter, we're up 24 to 10, but TCU's pressure has been intense and come on. We're just very blessed to have a team that can continue to hold them. And I don't know what you want Chandler Morris to do in this situation. It has been a pretty boring game though. And on the counter run, Ray Davis is gonna spin out of there, but he doesn't have the speed to break free now. And originally I was upset about that, but it works out in our favor because we're gonna run through more clock. They've been so focused on stopping the run. It's been easy to pass. But of course, when I say that we fumble the football away and with one more first down, the game would have been entirely over, but now TCU's worked it down inside our red zone and they're about to score. The game is really never over until the clock hits zero, but thankfully we recovered the onside kick and that's gonna be another positive result in the win column. In fact, it actually got us ranked inside the top 25, but I'm afraid it could all come crumbling down versus Texas because they're the number four team in the country and we have to play them on the road. The Longhorns first drive has already gotten them inside our red zone, but we could get a stop on third down. And I can't believe that clicking on the picket made that happen. I can promise you that that is not the opening we were hoping for. And then on the third and 23 later in the drive, I don't think we have a chance of picking it up, but that is a laser to Jamari Thrash. And I would be happy, but I don't see Sam Hartman in the game right now. This is our strong safety Catalan rolling out and throwing a dot. It's a good thing he's going to be returning soon because I doubt we're going to get that lucky again. We're stopping them on third down though. And we're getting ball to start the second quarter where I'm going to try to make this the only possession in this quarter. It's going to involve a lot of running and a lot of chew clock, but it would make a huge difference because we also get ball to start the second half and Ray Davis just fights for more yards. However, I am going to try a deep shot on them just because I haven't done that yet and they weren't expecting it. Tez Walker's going to hold on to the football. So what a catch from him and what a drive from us. When everyone stays healthy, this team is really good. They're going with the halfback screen on third and 13 for nowhere. And I'd like to think that our defense is the reason we've been able to still hold on to our lead in the third quarter though, I'm taking a sack. And I'm so used to always having a quarterback that can scramble, but this one can thread the needle. This is a massive third down and Quinn Ewers is going to
and have no time. So we actually have full control of this game and I might as well just throw up a ball to Keon Coleman, see what he can do against the safety and he comes down with it. But I'm starting to realize that if we can actually stay healthy, we are a playoff team. But in order to make it, we're probably gonna have to win all eight of our remaining games. And this one against Texas isn't over yet, but we're gonna stop the read option. So everything is on the line on this fourth and three. And of course they had a corner route open. Just in case he didn't get a foot in, I'm challenging it though. And I think I was wrong with that decision, but it did get pretty close. It seems like Texas is about to score a touchdown, so that's not good. And on this third and goal, I was watching the bunch side. There's nothing that's really open here. We're playing fantastic defense and we get the sack. It really all comes down to one final play and they went with a little screen pass. So we easily knocked it down and we're leaving this game with another win. But why is Demoy Kennedy in at running back? That is very concerning and it looks like Ray Davis is out for two weeks. So we're going to have to use our middle linebacker at running back until he gets healthy again. And that is terrible news for us. None of these remaining seven matchups feel like freebies, but at least Texas Tech lost to TCU. So if you apply the transitive property, theoretically, we should win this game, but we're not going to be able to run the ball. So we're going to have to pass a ton. And on the wheel route, we are already starting it out with a dot. Sam Hartman has been playing well after that first game against Nevada, but there's an interception to Texas Tech already. So I'm going to immediately take that back. And I am sending the house trying to force a safety, but I'm not sure if we're going to be able to make it happen. And I don't even know why I'm attempting to run the ball with Demoy Kennedy, but he has enough speed to get to the outside. I'm also going to use Travis Hunter there, but I don't want him to get injured because that would be devastating to this team. So we've gone back to passing the ball and this time Sam Hartman cannot throw a goal line pick, but he also couldn't get the ball out in time. So we have to kick a field goal. Approaching halftime, we're still up by three and I can't believe Texas Tech isn't settling for three here, but we're going to go into the half with a lead. And let me tell you, without Ray Davis, everything offensively just feels off. They know that we want to pass the ball, which makes things so difficult. And our defense can only stop Tyler Shuck for so long. On this third and 18, they are not going to pick it up though. So it seems like it's going to be all tied up at 10. And I love to see that they're pressing our players. I don't know why they would do that. Keon Coleman is a great receiver and their safety stuck with him, but they can't stop him. That's just another reminder to always look in his direction because he continues to get open and we could get them off the field on this third and six where they just ran the ball. That's going to take us to the fourth quarter and I would love to burn through the clock, but it's going to be difficult to do. However, I just remembered that we have a tight end at fullback and even if Trey Knox only has 78 speed, he should be much better. I don't know why we were playing a middle linebacker instead of him, but he is hard to stop. And with one first down, we could seal our win, but I don't see anything open here. And that is a tight window to Tez Walker who comes down with it. I cannot believe that this guy just held onto the football in between two players. But midway through this season, we're improving to 6-0. and And Keon Coleman is just a monster as well. We're starting to gain some traction as we're now ranked 11th. And Ray Davis is questionable for this next game, which is against 4-1 and Kansas. So we could use him, but he's not out there on the field as this handoff is going to Trey Knox instead. It's going to be another day of passing the ball. And here on fourth and three, I'm going to just go to Jaheim Bell who cannot hold onto the football. So it seems like Kansas is about to get onto the board first, but at least we held them to just a field goal. I'd love to score on this drive. They've gotten us to a third down where I'm just going to take to Travis Hunter and he made that defender miss plus slipped out of there. So this is a huge play from him. But unlike Deion Sanders, I'm going to give him a bit of time to rest and that's going to lead to an interception. Great. The worst part about this play is Sam Hartman had Keon Coleman wide open and I cannot wait until we have Ray Davis back on the offensive side of the ball, but that should have been a pick six from Mason Cobb. At least we're going to end the first half scoring a touchdown and there is no way that Des Moines Kennedy got into the end zone here. So of course Kansas decided to challenge it. Obviously our points were taken off the board, but I'm still confident that we'll punch it in and this has been a really rough first half for Jalen Daniels. We're very fortunate to still have a lead, but here in the third quarter we are starting to run away with the game and that's because our defense has been able to stay healthy and they're just really good though we are going to get bombed on this and I shouldn't have said anything. Kansas is in a position where they might actually score a touchdown if they're able to create separation. Travis Hunter is going to intercept it though and what a play from him to get over to that football. Also I have to note that putting Trey Knox at halfback has been amazing because the tight end slash fullback is a big part of this win and I'm no longer worried if Ray Davis is going to actually play. Without him we've been able to get up to number six in the polls and as it stands right now we're winning our division in the big 12 but we still have five games remaining on our schedule and I'm not expecting us to struggle against Iowa State. So it's no surprise that approaching halftime, we have a 10 point lead, but I'd like to go up by even more. And that's a laser. Our offense really hasn't been that special, but our defense has been, and I'm doing my best to not throw a goal line interception, but that might come at a cost. All I can really do is throw it straight to Keon Coleman who holds on to it. This has been some of the most fun I've ever had using a receiver in NCAA football. And I swear, anytime I don't feel like making a read, I just throw it up to him, but he drops that. So he's not perfect. And I might as well give him another chance on fourth and three where he is wide open.
win. Iowa State still hasn't crossed midfield, but they are looking to do it here, and we are just too good on defense. I almost feel bad for the Cyclones, but at the same time, winning by this much feels great, and it's been a while since we've blown a team out. I'm just glad that we're finally in the top four, which means if the season ended today, we would make the college football playoffs, but nobody on our team has been able to get their name into the Heisman race, and let's just hope that Ray Davis is finally back versus Cincinnati. It's remarkable how few injuries we've had, but I gotta be careful because I don't want to jinx us, and this one's being played at Nippert Stadium. It is nice to see Ray Davis back out there on the field for us, and maybe on second and 19 it'll work out for us. Keon Coleman runs by the safety, and that's a touchdown. I am so thankful that this entire team is completely healthy again, but it is weird that both of these teams are now in the Big 12, and I'm having to get used to all of the conference realignment, but Sam Hartman can't stop taking sacks, so I'm just thankful that we are about to go up by 14 on the Bearcats, and they're saying Keon Coleman was marked short, but that's okay because now Ray Davis can get his first touchdown since coming back. By halftime, it is still 14 to 0, and I'm gonna attempt a 58 yarder here to see if Campbell can make it from this far, which he can. I haven't necessarily built a super team, but the fact that we're this good with only transfers is incredible, and Jalen Catalong comes away with the interception. I just need him to break free, but unfortunately, he couldn't, so the ball is in the hands of Sam Hartman, and we might as well go to Keon Coleman, who is not gonna hold on to this one. He had two opportunities to catch this football, so I'm a little disappointed, but in the end, we're still gonna beat Cincinnati, so it doesn't really matter, and we only have a few games left in the regular season. They're not gonna be easy either since two of these teams are 6-2, and two, but we can still lose one of them and make the Big 12 championship, and my only fear is if we do drop one, we wouldn't make the playoffs. At this point, our defense is ranked number one in the country, and we're very fortunate we haven't had any injuries on that side of the ball yet, but my biggest fear is leading up to the playoffs, something is gonna happen to someone on this team. I've never had a team stay this healthy for this long, so I'm just expecting something bad to happen. Sam Hartman's gonna break the sack though, and if he rolls out and finds somebody open, that would be an incredible play. Up to this point, he's been playing like it's his best game yet, and on a fourth and three, he's gonna deliver it to Keon Coleman, and I have no idea why he thought he could fit it into that window, but it ended up working out, and while he continues to throw for touchdowns, we keep getting stops, so it almost feels like we are peaking as a team right at the end of the year. This ball is gonna go right over the head of that defender, and Jamari Thrash fights his way in. I just don't understand how it is this bad. I mean, the team is full of transfers that are really good, but Kansas State is a solid team, and they've just played terribly today, giving up another touchdown. This is the first time that we've really played like we're a 97 overall team, and since our punter's in at quarterback, I'm not even able to audible. I think we're giving this one to our cornerback, but let's just go for another touchdown pass to rub it in, and that's a dot. Sam Hartman obviously played out of his mind, and we're so blessed that our injury report is still blank, because sometimes these end-of-year road games can be super tough, but not for us as we're playing our best football yet, and we can't be stopped. In fact, we're doing so well, I can't remember the last time that happened, and the crazy part is our defense is still matching that same energy, so now that the offense is going, I think we're the best team in the country. I'll admit, it took us a very long time to actually play like it, but ever since Ray Davis came back from injury, we've just had our way with every team, and I'm gonna throw this one up to Keon Coleman who catches it. We're in such a rhythm where offense has gotten so easy, it feels like I'm playing on rookie, and I just can't believe how good this team is, but as you can see, it is still on Heisman, so we just have to appreciate and enjoy that this team of transfers is crazy. I will say, momentum is definitely a real stat in Dynasty, even if you're not able to see that stat anywhere, because the exact same roster that almost lost to Nevada to start the year just blew out Oklahoma State, and once again, Sam Hartman went off. The only reason he's not in the Heisman race is because he's thrown 14 interceptions, but a lot of those have come on 50-50 jump balls, and they just didn't go the way that we wanted them to, but now it's time to finish the regular season the right way, and even though West Virginia 7-3, and I am not concerned at all as we've already put up 21 points, but I will give them credit for keeping it a little bit closer than other teams we've recently played against. They have a slow style of offense, and we have to stop Garrett Green. His scrambling ability has been super frustrating, but at the end of the day, I think they're going to struggle to outscore us, so it won't really matter. I'm going to find Travis Hunter here, who drops it into an interception. You've got to be kidding. I wish the Mountaineers would just let us finish the regular season with an easy win, but I have to give them credit for making us earn this one instead, and I'm just thankful that we're going to go into the Big 12 championship with no injuries. Come on, Ray Davis, get into the end zone here. What a spin move, but all that effort still wasn't enough, so now we'll punch it in. That's actually going to be the reason he wins player of the game, and guess who we're playing in the Big 12 championship? It's Texas. They have the tiebreaker over Oklahoma because they beat them, and how on earth does someone have a better defense than us? I feel like holding teams to 12.3 points per game is really low, and I would love if we could do it against the Longhorns today, but playing a team for the second time always makes me nervous, and we're going to stop this halfback screen. We've definitely been performing much better than we were the last time that we faced them, so I guess when I put it that way, there should be no reason that I worry because we're going to beat them, and look at Travis Hunter go. He is such a special player because he's able to lock up on the offensive and defensive side of the ball, but Texas is finally having themselves a
a good drive and knocking them backwards there is huge. We could get them off the field on this third and six and I don't see anything open. That's got to be intercepted. And I'm pretty upset that he couldn't hold on to it. But I also trust our offense to score more points and I see Keon Coleman streaking open but they intercept it. They were running cover two and this ball was just thrown way too late. But the next time we'd get it back we've moved it much carefuller to score seven points. And I'm sending seven players at Quinn Ewers which worked out. We are taking care of business the way that we need to and our tight end just had a beautiful route. So Jaheim Bell is starting to make some noise again. And on this third and 10 near the end of the first half, there's nowhere for Quinn Ewers to throw it. We're in a position where if one or two more things go our way, we're going to be able to pull away. And Tez Walker has just run right by that cornerback. I also have to note how awesome his dive into the end zone was. But here in the third quarter, the Longhorns have refused to go away. And I'm a bit nervous that they're going to get into the end zone here, which gets it back within two possessions. So we should probably start running through the clock with Ray Davis instead of passing. Texas isn't going to be able to beat us. And it looks like Trey Knox is in for this touchdown run. So originally that made me happy to see him, but I'm a bit worried Ray Davis might not be healthy for the playoffs. So it's hard to be excited during this conference championship celebration. It says there's nobody on the injury report though. So we're going into the playoffs healthy and Keon Coleman won the Blitnikoff award while Jaheim Bell won the John Mackey and Drake Nugent won the Remington. We also had Jordan Birch win the Lombardi and Sam Hartman led the country in passing yards, but with 16 interceptions, he couldn't be in the Heisman race. And that's mainly because he force fed the ball to Keon Coleman, but it was worth it. And look at all of these different rushers we've had. All around this entire season was just a ton of fun, but now it's time to see if we can win a championship or not. And North Carolina hasn't lost a single game, but they've only played one ranked team. With that in mind, we have no idea how they're going to do against us. So it'd be amazing if we could have a good first drive, but I just noticed something weird on this play and I'm about to point it out. Trey Knox is the one that hiked the football and hopefully he's not in at center for long because I'd assume with just one broken thumb, he would play, but I've never played center, so I wouldn't know. Tez Walker just had a huge catch against the team that he ended up transferring to, and that means that he's going to be on both sides of the ball in this game, but hopefully we have the better one. He hasn't had a catch yet, and here on third and five, Drake May is going to throw it off of his back foot where Travis Hunter is going to pick it off, and somehow he was able to slip out of there, so we should be able to take this one back to the crib. What a start this is for us. It's obvious to me that Drake May is not good at handling pressure, so we're going to send more his way, and through two drives, the Tar Heels only have three points, while we're just stepping on the offensive side of the field for the second time today where we could get up to 21 and I shouldn't have forced that one to Tez Walker because of course it was knocked into an interception. That's ridiculous. Don't get me wrong. It was a terrible read, but I wasn't expecting them to also pick it off. And I'm just glad North Carolina has only gotten field goals so far. We pretty much have control this game if we can continue to score. And I'm going to find Keon Coleman here inside the five. So this is setting up for Ray Davis to just run it in to put us up by 15. But once again, North Carolina has gotten it down inside the red zone and that's a touchdown. Nearing the end of the third quarter, they're only down by two. So we have to finish this drive off. And I guess this is what happens when you don't play against a big 12 defense. I'm just going to give to Trey Knox here and he is so versatile. He's going to break that tackle and fight his way into the end zone. I cannot believe at one point in this game, he was playing center for us and then he does that. But that was a perfect way to end the third quarter. And even though North Carolina did get it close for a bit, we're going to pick up this first down to Keon Coleman. And I might as well look back in his direction where he is just wide open. Third and 10 now for North Carolina and Drake may had the drag underneath. He throws it to his halfback instead, but we stopped him half a yard short. So it's fourth and inches and he has plenty of time back there. We just got to get some pressure and come on. Thank you. At the beginning of this play, Travis Hunter got burnt by JJ Jones, but he ended up making up for it by just sticking with him the entire time. And because of that, our spot in the national championship should be secured. It feels good to know that we've got BYU this far. And I know Travis Hunter didn't win player of the game, but I think he deserves it because he's been fantastic all year. And that pick six was a huge momentum swinger. Our opponent's going to be one of these two Pac-12 teams. And I really don't want to face either one of them. So I don't really care who wins. Oregon is trailing with about 30 seconds remaining though. And if they score a touchdown, they're probably going to put out Caleb Williams. They wasted a down by spiking it though. So now it's third and goal where the flat is wide open. I saw that way sooner than Bonix, but because he didn't make the read in time, it is fourth and goal. And this one is going to be picked off. In NCAA football, I guess USC has a defense and I'm just glad we're going into this one with no injuries. The Trojans only loss came to Oregon in the Pac-12 championship. So I guess that win in the playoffs over them was revenge, but it stinks that they practically have the home field advantage in this one. And we're just fortunate to have already gotten them to a third and 11 where Caleb Williams takes his check down. So we're going to force them to attempt a long field goal. And this one is off the marks. I'm feeling really good about this game so far, just because USC's defense is known for being bad. And from what I've seen so far, they don't stand much of a chance in stopping us as we've moved it down the field effortlessly. Now that throw was into a tight window, but Jamari Thrash should have created more separation. And what I'm worried about is the defensive side of things against USC, where they're going to try to bomb us, but Catalan gets over to it. That's a huge pick. We have an opportunity to go up 14 to zero early on. And I see 
see Travis Hunter down there in the end zone. So I'm going to throw it up to him. And what a catch from the cornerback coming onto the offensive side of the ball. And hopefully things can continue to go this well for us as on this third and six, we are going to hold them short. That was a perfect first quarter. And hopefully we can continue to dominate. Tez Walker is going to create zero separation on that play. He should have created a ton. That's why I threw it. And ever since that moment, things have just gone downhill for us. I'd feel a lot better if we could end the first half with a score, but that was a rough sack to take. So I might as well just throw it up on third and long and Tez Walker went right by the cornerback, but he dropped it. We've seen him make incredible catches and he had it in his hands right there. But now we're going to see if our kicker can hit from 62 yards away. And that one actually went in. I guess that's why I ended up choosing him. And we're going to end the first half up seven, but I wasn't expecting it to actually work. Here in the third quarter, I want to continue to take some deep shots. I don't see anyone open though. Sam Hartman scrambling for a lot of yards and he fumbled it to Ray Davis, but that's the best way we've ever gotten a first down. And it's kept the drive alive where I might as well just go up the middle to Raheem Bell. This feels like the Nevada game though, where we're just dropping almost everything. And I see that Trey Knox is in at left tackle. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind, get the ball out a little bit sooner, but that's going to make this game a lot harder since he's out for the rest of it. And I see some Joe randoms on the field right now, which scares me. This offensive line is looking very rough. I'm just going to go to Travis Hunter. And I think our team needed a breather, but if we can get a stop on this third and 15, our offense is not going to get long on the bench. You'd think it'd be a good thing because we're getting the ball back, but everybody's been so gassed. We have lost yards until now where Keon Coleman just ran right by number 22. And we've gotten to the point in this game where it makes sense to run the ball as much as we can. We've already made it to the fourth quarter. And since we're guaranteed a field goal on this drive, it's not going to be hard to get a three possession lead on USC. But it's just remarkable how few injuries we've had this season besides the big one to Ray Davis. And I thought making all of the bench players terrible would make winning a championship hard with this team, but we're still going to be able to do it. What a run. Once we picked up some momentum, we started playing way better. And my bank account is thankful I don't have to give away a jersey today. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and make sure to let me know what type of team I should build next because I've really enjoyed testing out this new style. And if you want to see another video similar to this one, you could watch that right here.